Welcome to QLab. Well, as you can see from the intro clip, we're going to be storing lightning in a bottle. If you want to follow along with the experiment, as usual, everything you need will be in the description. So let's get started. So to begin making a bottle to store our static electricity or lightning, we're going to need a bottle and its cap. And I'm going to begin by putting some foil, just some aluminium or tin foil, around the outside. So I'm going to get a bit of tape. This is just some masking tape. Is that only because it's what I've got available? A bit of tape. My foil. And I'm going to stick it part down on one side so that I can tape the bottle. And I'm not fantastic at crafts, so please don't judge me too harshly for this. I'm just going to wrap it around. So we've got our foil attached to the outside of the bottle. Now what we're going to do is work a little on the cap. And I've got a, a simple nail here, and we're just going to poke that through the cap. Got to hold it firmly. There we go. You can see my hand is clear so that I can push, but I won't go into my finger. There we go. That was simple. Just a, a nail through the top of the bottle, no, through the cap. So we've got that bit sorted. Now, I'm going to take another nail and some tape. I'm going to pull some tape off. And I'm going to wrap. Which end am I going to wrap? Yes, this end. And I'm going to wrap that so that I can hold it and hopefully oh, not get a shock, but you know, probably going to get a shock. Now the way I assemble this is I take my crocodile clip, I attach it to this nail, and then I attach that to the outside of this bottle. And I'm just going to do it at the bottom here, because there's a little lip spare. And then we take our salt water electrolyte. Now in this I'm cheating a little bit because rather than just using electrons, we can actually make use of something called ions. Now I know we haven't explored ions yet, but this is just salt water. So there's sodium chloride, or normal table salt, dissolved up in water. And I put quite a lot in. To give you perspective, I put about that much salt in, and then filled it up to here with water and stirred it really well. So we're going to add that. To our bottle now. And now we just screw the cap on. Right, so before we test this guy out, I have to explain a couple of little changes I made. One of them was I found that when I was attaching the clip, the little crocodile clip to the foil, it would start to rip. And I thought, well, that wasn't very good. So what I've done is I've taken just a little paper clip like this, and I've opened it out. I've folded it out. And if you can see here, I sellotaped it to the surface of this foil, and then put another piece of foil over the top and attached that, just so I knew I had good contact between this and the outer foil. And that little paper clip, well, it allows us to attach our crocodile clip to that, so that when we want to discharge this, we can just bring it like so. One other thing I've thought about here is, of course, we want to ground this. And I'll explain why we do as I show how it works. But when I say ground it, it's ever so simple. It's a piece of foil attached to a crocodile clip. And when I'm charging this up, 
I'm just going to attach this clip to the nail and then I'm just going to drop this on the floor. And that's so it has a lot of contact with the ground. So if I drop that to the floor, we're all set up to charge this guy. Now before I charge it, I just want you to have a quick realisation of what we've made. Well, this is called a Leyden jar. And it's a kind of capacitor. And that means we've got a conductor, which could be the foil on the outside, an insulating layer, which electrons can't move through very well, and that's the plastic of the bottle sandwiched between another conductor, which is the salt water inside the bottle. And it's really important that charge can't pass from the salt water in the bottle to the foil outside the bottle. Now the way we're going to charge it is the same thing we were using in the first video. We've got a PVC pipe and a wool cloth or blanket. And what I'm going to do is you have to get quite comfortable with this and it's not as easy as it looks. So if you're going to try and copy this at home I'm going to explain a few things that you've really got to keep your eye on because I know I've seen that some people have tried to copy this and struggle to replicate it. One thing is, if it's very humid, say someone's had a shower and it's very sort of steamy or humid in the air, the static will discharge very quickly off even the PVC pipe and it can get very hard to try and build up any kind of stored static. Another thing is, you have to grip the pipe tightly. And as I push through, so let's, I set myself up a bit like this, so you, you can see, and I'm going to push the pipe through the blanket, touching the nail on the top. Now I'm going to do it so you can see the nail side, once it's a bit harder for me to do it this side, like so. And then I lift it up and draw it back and go in again. I'm going to do this a number of times to charge up this bottle. I'm probably going to do it about 50 to 100 times. But let's just think about what we're doing. Well, as I'm pushing the pipe through the cloth, if you remember from part one, electrons from the cloth are moving to the pipes, the pipe's becoming positive, and the cloth is becoming negative. No, wrong way around, isn't it? Electrons make the thing negative. So the pipe's becoming negative and the blanket's becoming positive. But when I touch a conductor, like the nail, well, those electrons can move to the conductor. So the nail becomes negative and the salt water electrolyte, well, that can become negative as well because it's all connected. But crucially, the electrons can't go through the, the insulating layer, so the foil on the outside doesn't become negative. Now if you can remember when we have lots of electrons or lots of negative charge, like charges repel each other. And so those electrons or that negative charge that's in the electrolyte pushes the electrons on the foil on the outside away. So the foil becomes a bit positive. Now the reason we've earthed it down here is to give the electrons somewhere to go so that they can go from the foil down and earth away. Now a really good thing to do is if you can connect the blanket or if you can get some really good charges if you connect that to the earth. We won't be doing that. It's important though to have that earth otherwise you'll only get very small charges, just little shocking charges rather than a good bolt of electricity. Right, I'm going to stop talking now and charge this up and then we'll see what happens when we connect the positive to the negative. <laughs> charged up so the first thing I'm going to have to do 
is detach that earth. Do you remember? So now I've got the nail loose and that's what we're going to use to connect to the top. So let's see what happens when we take this very positive outside plate or foil and connect it to the very negative electrolyte via that top nail. Right, let's bring this nail close to the one at the top. Wowza! Now, something interesting might happen if I wait a second because it won't have discharged fully. So let me bring it close again. Did you hear that final little click? That was it just finishing off a discharge because sometimes it can't discharge as quickly. Let's see what that looks like in the dark. So what's happening here? Well, remember that we've got that negative charge inside the bottle and a positive charge on the outside. Well, we're going to make it a bit simplistic and say effectively that the electrons on the outside, well, they know there aren't enough electrons. Sorry, the electrons on the inside, they know there aren't enough electrons on the outside because those nuclei, well, they're more positive protons. So when we connect this up, those electrons rush through to fill that positive gap. And thus, the whole thing becomes neutral. Now, if you want to get into a lot of depth about this, you can think about electric fields and how they interact, but we don't want to do that right now. So what is this? Well, it's a capacitor and it has a high voltage capacity. So that little shock there, that was thousands of volts but it was very low current. And the volt, that just means a difference in the charge, a difference between a positive and negative. But the current is the flow of those electrons. Well, the electricity we deal with around the house, that's a little bit different because it's the opposite. It's a relatively low voltage. In the UK, we have it between 230 and 240 volts, but it's a very high current. So that electricity is flowing very fast, and that's what makes it useful. So, we've had a lot of fun with this experiment, exploring it, but there is a serious point we want to consider, which is that this is a high voltage discharge. I mean, you saw it with a little lightning bolt, and that's quite dangerous. So, when we handle it, we're always very careful. We always want to make sure that it's thoroughly discharged and connected up like this, so you have no cracking or crackling before you handle it. And that just makes it safe. Remember, with all the science we do, we want to be as safe as possible. Well, I think that's enough to digest for now. If you struggled with anything to do with the charges, why not check out our video part one, where we look at the difference between positive and negative charges. So we're going to use this Leyden jar in some future experiments to store up our static electricity. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.